There's a great book by Gene Youngblood called Expanded Cinema. It was written in the 70s. And he said, cinema reflects mankind's historical drive to manifest his consciousness outside of his mind in front of his eyes. So this idea of cinema being a mirror to our subjectivity, unlike anything else in the world, right? There's reality, and then there's our first person subjective perspective on the world, right? Objective, subjective. And documentaries, you know, or the news, even though the news is biased, tries to show you the objective world. Cinema is the only tool, I think, that shows you the subjective world. I mean, maybe music does too. Um, Hugo Merstenberg was one of these film first like scholars to talk about the power of film back when it was called the photoplay in like 1912 or something. And he was the first to say the photoplay works like the mind more than like reality. And it was like the close up reflects attention, right? The flashback represents memory. The foreshadowing represents thinking of the future, right? So it's interesting. And also in film, you have cuts between different scenes. How come that doesn't give us a seizure? How come we can stitch together narratives even when you're cutting between different places and moments? Because that's how we are, you know? We're doing that. Persistence of vision is a human thing, you know? Like, we, that's how we stitch together reality. But I, I researched this even more, and I found this guy called a, wrote a book called Mind Screen or something like that. And he said that basically cinema is consciousness externalized. And so consciousness meets its own process when we watch a film. Now think about that. You're sitting in a room in the dark. There's a massive screen, right? And because it's dark, you kind of forget your body, forget yourself. You don't have nothing to attend to the grounds you in, in the 3D objective world. So it's all subjective world now. Um, and, and not constrained by time and space even. So it's all mind. So here you are, the screen turns on, and your consciousness is meeting a version of its own process. Like you're actually looking at a mirror of consciousness on the fucking screen. And the guy that directed uh, Before, the Before Sunrise trilogies, uh, I forget his name, the director. Um, anyway, he did this documentary about cinema and time. And he said the reason that we didn't have to learn how to watch movies is because we've been doing it every night when we sleep forever. Because when we dream, it's all mind as well. And so, so all of that, I think, is, is wonderful because back to the feeling of connection. Cinema, like connecting with a person, connecting with a film is an intersubjective experience. It's assuming the viewpoint of a character. It's not looking at the screen, it's looking into the screen and into the character's minds. And once you assume the viewpoint of the character, looking out through the character's point of view. So assuming the viewpoint of somebody else means becoming somebody else. And from a phenomenological perspective, what, what the fuck is going on there, right? You know, the Greeks talk about Kronos and Kairos. So Kronos, yeah, the film is one hour and 20 minute running time. It's 24 frames per second. It's scripted. There's actors. Yeah, sure. There's an explanation in Kronos. But in Kairos, from the inside, in the movie theater, it's like a lived myth. False from the outside, but true from the inside. And what happens when I assume the viewpoint of the character? And I have an experience that may, it's like a psychedelic trip. It may be objectively two hours long, but, but phenomenologically it exists outside of time. And it transformed my consciousness even though it wasn't about me or my biography, right? It was a fucking another character, another story, and yet archetypally it mirrored me. So I was him, but he was also me. What is that? You know, like, what is that? Like from a transpersonal perspective, has anybody ever like really thought about it? Like. Hmm, like that's an interesting phenomenon when we watch films. It's a, it's a completely transpersonal experience. And for people who overly identify, who have the, the diseases of over-identification with the ego, at least in, from an autobiographical perspective, they could get a lot of medicinal intervention from watching a movie and losing themselves in the movie. There's a lot of freedom from undergoing an experience that doesn't happen to you. <laughs> at least not to your biography. Like, what is that? So I just I just really love it. And I, I, it's, 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 a, it's a drug I enjoy.